Talk Coach. a little bit about, we got to see the lion's den kind of up close a little bit. Can you talk a little bit about what the pluses of that are for practice for you guys? It, it gives you a great opportunity just to evaluate them without any scheme. It's mano y mano. Can you get off a block? Can you make the block? Um, and you know, today it was maybe some guys that are a little bit down the depth chart and give them an opportunity to show what they could do. I was really happy with Tomasetti. Uh, went up there, you know, put his hat on the guy, big hit. You know, that's how you can earn a job, you know, covering kicks or something like that. It's just another opportunity to evaluate. It's another opportunity to step up in front of your teammates and show what type of football player you are. So um, I think there's a lot of value in it. I really do, because a lot of times when you're out there running offense or defense, their brains are spinning with scheme and just go play football. So uh, that, that's been good for us. Plus it gets the juices flowing to start practice. 11 practices in, I think it is, are you where you thought you would be or did you have a good gauge of where you might be at this point? I, you know, I, I, we really don't approach it that way. Um, we just, we just want to come out every single day and get better. Um, I think we've done that. I really do. I think they got a pretty good grasp of what we're trying to do defensively, offensively, on special teams. We've laid a really good foundation. Um, and, and, and the guys have done a great job investing, coming in and watching film, those types of things. So. I don't really look at it from the big picture. It's just wake up every single morning, maximize that day, and I think our guys are doing that. I've been, I've been pleased with it. I think the coaching staff's doing a heck of a job. We've talked a lot about depth being an issue, but all right, let's talk about the guys that are on the field working every practice. What have you seen from those guys that you know that you're going to be able to build on working into the summer? Yeah, you know, the, the attitude, the work ethic has been great. Um, I think they're retaining a lot of the information. We're starting to play faster which is going to be important to us. Um, you know, but you know, there, there's been some guys that I think obviously are doing impressive things. I've been very impressed with Hackenberg. Everybody told me ahead of time, but you know, until you see it live, I've been very, very impressed with him. Um, you know, I think, I think Donovan, uh, Donovan Smith had a really, really good camp. I think Mike Hull has played extremely well. Um, he's handling uh, the Mike linebacker position, making all the calls. Uh, Amos is an impressive guy as well. I could go on and on. I don't like to really you know, point specific guys out, but I've been impressed with a, with a handful of the guys. I think, I think Ficken, I've mentioned that before, I think Ficken's had a great spring. With those linebackers, I know last week you talked about you know, the defense kind of you know, being where you want it to be. With Wartman and Brandon Bell specifically playing that field spot, have they kind of caught on there pretty good? And yeah, it, it's still early to tell. Mike Holes, like I mentioned, has jumped out to me. Um, the other guys, it's, it's still an evolution. We're you know, wait and see right now. Um, we'll have a better idea after we watch you know, the spring game and really see how they compete. Um, but I, I don't think those positions have been solidified at any point. And I, and I would say that across the board. Now, I want these guys to compete at the end of the spring. We'll look at it and see where we anticipate guys coming into fall camp. Um, but I, you know, there's very few spots that I feel are solidified at this point. Coach, you've had to you... plug in some new guys, obviously, offensive line and wide receiver. How much, if at all, has that held you back in what you're trying to do offensively this spring? No, it's not going to hold us back. We're going we're to push forward. Um, you know, we're going to coach the guys that we have here. Those other things are outside of our control. Um, the guys have done a good job. You know, when we get uh, to summer camp and the new guys come in, then we'll coach those guys hard as well. And whoever's going to give us the best opportunity to win. I don't care if you're in state, out of state. I don't care if you're a senior or a freshman. I don't care if you're a returning starter. I don't care if you're scholarship or walk on. We're going to play the best guys. This is not little league uh, politics. Play, you know, you know, play your son type of deal. We're going to play the best guys. Yeah. Um, Mike Hall said this week when you first got here. There was still with them, circle the wagons, us against the world mentality. And he said he thinks the walls come down. What have you done to make the walls come down? It, it's, it's never anything that I've done. It's what, what we do as a whole family. Um, I just think the more time that we get to spend together, they see the type of people that we've brought here. Um, how we interact with them you know, at practice, how we are in meetings, you know, when we're able to have these guys over our house for dinner. The more interaction we get, it's just it's trust. It's trust that's built up, trust that's built up with you guys, the people in the community and all those types of things, and the consistency in our actions. So um, you know, I think it's naturally going to happen over time. I think it's getting better. Um, I, I'm very, very confident that come the first game of the year, we'll have as good a chemistry as anybody in the country because that's a focus of our program.
If you have any more thoughts as to format, you guys are going to let this guy just dominate the whole <laughs> the whole session, huh? Sorry. I'm one of the louder voices, that's why. Have you given any more thought to the format for the Blue White game? Yeah, the format is really dictated on you know where we're at, you know, in terms of depth and bodies by the time the game comes along. Um, at this point, we still plan on. Um, having a, a true spring game um you know we'll see how this week goes and, and and affects that what you what you probably can plan on is the o-line will be in a different color um because we want those guys to be able to play on both teams if they need to be we're not changing jerseys on sidelines stuff like that so we'll have a blue team we'll have a white team we'll break the coaching staff up um and then uh the o-line will all be in, in one color so that they can run back and forth probably gray i know everybody's so you know uh consumed by the uniforms around here. <laughs> uh, gray, and it's not a new statement. We're not thinking about wearing gray next year. It's just for this situation for the blue and white game. Is Will there you one be able side to... of the ball that you're more comfortable with than the other right now? I, practices in? I think the defense typically is ahead. Um, you know, that, that's just the case. You align and assign and then run to the ball. We've done a good job of that. It's obviously a little bit more complicated than that. But the defense is usually a little bit uh, further ahead. Um, I think our defensive staff and Coach Shoup do a great job. I think if you look across the board at every position, um, you know we're in pretty good shape with starters on the defensive side of the ball. Linebackers, the one issue that I think we got to get resolved, um, and we have some depth, especially on the defensive line. Offense, we don't necessarily have that at every position and every unit. If you break it down, O line, tight ends, you know, quarterbacks, running backs, and receivers. You know, if you look on defense, I feel pretty good about the D-line. I feel pretty good about the Mike linebacker, and I feel pretty good about the secondary. You know, the other thing I think with defense, you can solve some of your problems. So you know, say, you don't, say you don't feel as good about all three linebackers, you can go nickel and dime and do some things like that. On offense, if you don't have five offensive linemen, it's not like you can choose to play with three. You know, it is what it is. Can you speak to the importance of developing the backup quarterbacks or guys other than Christian this spring, and specifically, how is O'Connor done coming in as an early enrollee? Yeah, obviously, um, you know, depth at that position is going to be very, very important. Um, how we call the game, you know, will be affected, you know, by our depth situation, the quarterback situation. Uh, excuse me, the quarterback position as well. Um, I think O'Connor. Um, you know, I'd like for him to get a little bit more confident that he can drive the ball a little bit. He's got a pretty strong arm. What I've been very impressed with is just his knowledge of the game. Um, it comes pretty natural to him. He knows to go where, to, where to go with the ball. He doesn't panic. Um, I've been impressed with that. I really have. Um, but we just got to get him more confident with his footwork and his arm strength, so he can make some of the some of the more challenging throws. Um, I think Crooks has done a nice job for us as well. Um, you know, whip, whip, whip. You know, brings value as well. But um, it's going to be interesting to see how that thing plays out. And then you got McSorley coming in as well, who was here today. Are there things, or, or is there a process where you can speed up the development of younger offensive linemen in case they have to be pushed into action? You know, maybe sooner than you would have thought. Yeah, I mean, obviously time. I mean, time and reps, but you know, we only get so much time with them and you only get so many reps. So that, that's the challenging part. But getting those guys to commit to coming in and watching a bunch of film, not only from practice, but all last season and the season before, even if it's a different team, it's still the same plays. And being able to grind and, and each play kind of pause the film pre-snap and say, how would I call this front? You know, what blitz are they bringing? What is my assignment going to be? and really approach it that way. And getting guys to invest, coming in and watch film and talking and ball and, and going through situations like that is gonna help them take mental reps. Um, you know, there's a perspective of it. You know, they, they gotta get the physical part of it as well, but um, being able to prepare mentally is a huge part. With a year under his belt, can Christian kind of help speed up the development and learning process for some of the young receivers, maybe Deshaun and um, DeAndre as well? Yeah. Like, have you seen that? Have you seen those guys develop chemistry this early on? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say this. Uh, it's hard for him to do that at this point because he's learning. But what, what I think you will see is I, I, will, I think you'll see Christian taking all the wideouts and the tight ends, coming and watching film with them all, all season, going out and throwing individual routes, going out and throwing seven on seven. You, you got a much better chance to improve your passing game between the end of spring and the beginning of fall camp than you do your running game. It's hard to go out and work on the running game in the summer, you know, in shorts and t-shirts. But the quarterbacks and receivers and the DBs, they can go out and work all summer long, get a lot of work done. With the gray jerseys, do you anticipate the offensive linemen being able to put uh, two teams out there regarding the offensive line, or is that basically just put one team out there and, you know, kind of no, we'll, we'll go. We'll go two different teams at this point. 
we'll go two different teams. But again, if you get one guy that gets banged up, then we're gonna have to start running guys from sideline to sideline. Unless, unless you feel like you can, you can step in there on Saturday and I get the job done. I've done my eligibility. Done. You did? Well, we'll check with compliance. I think you might be able to help us. One of the things that's been important to you since the get-go is your relationship with high school coaches. Obviously, the coaching clinic here today, about 300 guys that are out there. How, what have you learned kind of about the area coaches just in you know, a weekend like this one? And how has that you know, been working like in practice and things like that? I think it's been great. Uh, you know, we had good numbers, I think, you know, considering uh, we, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of time to get the clinic put together. I thought the administrative staff did a great job. I think the high school coaches were very appreciative. Uh, we had great speakers come in as well that did a great job for us. So um, it's been good, you know, but it, it's a process. I think, I think the clinic will be much bigger next year. Um, we had good numbers. We got a lot of work done. Um, and as much as we got work done talking X's, X's and O's, it was also just kind of sitting around building relationships and getting to know guys. So it's been fun for me. A lot of my buddies, a lot of guys I played college ball with or high school ball, you know, being able to come back and same with the rest of our coaches. So you know, it's not really recruiting. It's not really um, work for us. It's, it's hanging out with my buddies. You mentioned the defense before. What have you seen progressing from a group that has some returning guys outside, some young guys inside? What kind of progress have you seen the defensive line make? Well, I, that's the one position I think we we got as good a depth as, as any position on our team. Um, you know, defensive end as well as defensive tackle. The move that we had to make, you know, moving guys to the O line affected us a little bit at defensive tackle, but we did that because we have a lot of confidence in Taro Barney and. Um, I'm a loss for a name right now, uh, the, the White. freshman. White. Antoine White, who came in at mid-semester. We have a lot of confidence in those two guys. They're going to have to play for us. So the fact that they're doing a good job allow us to move those two guys over to defense, and we still got pretty good depth. We got about two and a half to three deep at defensive tackle that we feel pretty good about. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach.